Mary, Jesus' mother, bookends the Gospel of John. At the beginning, we have the wedding at Cana. Jesus says to his mother again, Woman, my hour has not yet come. She tells the servants, you know, do whatever he tells you, and water is turned into wine. The wine steward marvels that the best wine was saved for last. And the gospel writer John writes that Jesus revealed his glory and the disciples believed in him. In John 12, Gentiles come to see Jesus. He says, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. To be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Let me say that again. From the death of one grain comes much fruit. He continues, now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. In John 14, Jesus talks about his death with the disciples and uses wedding language of going before them to building a house, a room on his father's house for them. And we know that one of the rituals of marriage is also drinking wine. New families are made at weddings. And right before Jesus says from the cross, I am thirsty, and is given sour wine, we have this new family formed between John and Mary. Woman, here is your son. And to the disciple, here is your mother. And then we read, and from that hour, the disciple took her into his home. The hour that Jesus initiates is a time when family is created through faith in him. I wonder if Jesus isn't saying, the love that you have for me, pour into one another, which is wonderful advice for anyone who is grieving. The love you have for, your, for, for the one that you have lost, pour it out into the world. Following Jesus is not an intellectual exercise. It's a way of life. And it is a, a commitment to living in community, in community, to caring for one another, loving neighbor as we love self. The single grain dies. The leader of the movement dies. We know that Jesus is resurrected but, and is with us in power and spirit. But the movement, his movement continues. The movement is towards one another. Mary was accompanied by Mary Magdalene and Mary, wife of Clopas, who is believed to be the sister-in-law of Mary, Joseph's brother's wife. And you may know that when the husband dies, it is the responsibility of the brother to take the wife into his home. So that is what tradition believes happened with Mary. And we believe that Joseph probably passed because we haven't heard a thing about him since Jesus was 12 or 13. So following the custom, Mary would have gone to live with Joseph's brother. In this new hour, we are called to care for orphan or widow, the folks who have no one to take care of them, regardless of whether we are related. And I would remind you that Jesus, you know, some people, and I've heard people say this, you know, that we're called to care for other believers. But just remember Jesus' stories. You know, who are the heroes of the stories? The Good Samaritan, those people. Loving neighbor, doesn't matter who they believe in. We are called to love neighbor as we love self. The love we would pour into Jesus, we are called to pour into one another. So let me now tell you some good, feel-good stories. Betty was a member of my congregation. Betty told me one of her sadnesses in life is that she could not have children. She had lost several pregnancies, and the doctor finally told her stop. 
But whenever Betty was sick, I got more phone calls because Betty was mom to all these children. There was the neighbor son who came to live with her when he was a teenager because the home environment was such that it was, it was better to be across the street. He was at the hospital. There was the niece and her husband, the niece whose mom was an alcoholic. And when that got out of, out of hand, she went to live with aunt Betty. She was at the hospital and her husband. There was the, the great nephew and great niece in that family. And I even in my head, I had like, she's not my aunt. Stop. In my head, I kept calling her Aunt Betty. Okay. And I marveled with her. I said, you might not have been able to have children, but you have had a tremendous family. You, uh, Betty, you need to know. <laughs> I don't get all these phone calls. And she, you know, There's a story of Roger. Roger was an elementary school teacher and he was leaving work one day and he saw a little boy, Jonathan, out on the playground by himself swinging. And he went over, Jonathan, what are you doing here? Well, my mom left us and my dad's working, so I'm here. Roger hung out for a little bit and then sent Jonathan home and kept an eye on him in the coming days. Jonathan's dad, at one point, was not able to take care of Jonathan, and Jonathan was put into foster care. The dad got him back, but then when it looked like he was going to lose him again, approached Roger and said, would you take him in? And he did. And he went on to go to college. He became a missionary in South Africa. He met somebody wonderful. He now works in the inner city with at-risk children. There's the families that we are given and there's the families that we make. Faye, who decided to be like a daughter to Irene in the nursing home, who threw her a 90th birthday party. And Irene had never had a birthday party and was like a little kid with her cake and balloons. And nobody would have guessed that Faye was not her daughter as she devotedly sat there for Irene's last days. Jesus would have us pour our love for him out into the world. I imagine Mary and John, after Jesus has said this and after Jesus has died, just looking at each other. And what was the conversation? I imagine a conversation around food. Like, what's your, what's your favorite dish? <laughs> oh, my mom used to make this. My sister tries to make it, but it's not the same. And I tease her. She says, Mom must have, you know, there was a hidden ingredient that Mom never told her, but I just think she's a lousy cook. Right? And Mary says, I know how to make that dish. Listening to each other, getting to know one another, becoming family. Part of the process of the interim time is listening to the larger community. What are the needs? Part of love is listening. Work with a lot of churches sometimes, and, and I've been in the church a long time, we can sit in the church and guess what the needs are out there rather than talking to people. Listening, deep listening, is I, there are five love languages that it, the theory is, I don't know, and I, I find that really, really interesting and, and practical. But quality time is one of the love languages, but deep listening to one another is part of that. And it's one of the ways that we love. And the deep listening then leads into the other love languages, which are acts of service. What do we do? Well, this is what we're going to do because this is what we heard. 
gift giving, touch, words of affirmation. The love we pour into Jesus, we pour into one another. And I know that I have said this before and I'm going to keep saying it. There's just my, our hearts are heavy for the world right now. And the anger that we might experience in ourselves or out in the world. There's a lot of finger pointing, a lot of shouting, not a lot of listening. A lot of people telling other people what they think rather than asking the question. Lots of demonizing going on. And overly anxious people look for somebody to blame. It's like a teapot or a tea kettle, right? It boils up and there's a release. And you know, that, that little, the spout there where the steam goes, there's a release. It helps you to get angry at somebody. It's human nature to do it. But once we realize that we're doing it, we can choose another path. That is what Jesus calls us to. And there are times to be angry, absolutely. But our response should always be rooted in love. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't mean that we always agree. Do families always agree? That's when you're supposed to laugh, <laughs> right? No, but we choose to love. Jesus' call is to love. Love demands listening. Love asks us, asks us to pour our love into the world. And so lives are transformed. Ask Betty, may she rest in peace, or Roger, or Faye, or just let's talk to one another. We could hopefully entertain one another for the rest of the day with stories of how love has been poured into us and we have been transformed or how we have seen that through our actions, through our listening, through our love. The leader of the movement celebrates every time we choose to pour our love for him into those who have not known love, the least, the lost, the grieving. Can we think of anyone that Jesus would not call us to love? And from that hour, Grace Presbyterian Church. And it's not like this is the first time you say this, but this is a good way to close. And from that hour, the Grace Presbyterian ch Church took God's children into their hearts that they might know God's house as their home. May it be so. In Jesus' name, amen.